the business of making solar available to people is Mr. John Grant. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And, uh, indeed, a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Uh, when I was invited to come along and speak, I was told uh, we're going to have fantastic Indian food at the Taj uh, Agra uh, restaurant, and you get to speak about solar policy. And I said, that's fantastic. Two of my most favourite things on the same day. So, <laughs> Uh, to uh, Mohammed, to Dr Mansour, to everybody involved uh, in Forum Australia. What a fantastic idea. Because political parties are good at, at political spin. The media is a filter to ideas. To, so to actually come together and discuss these issues directly, I think bodes well for our democracy. Uh, and uh, I commend you, I think it's a fantastic initiative, so uh, tremendous. I want to actually start my presentation today by just telling you a little bit about my own family. So when my parents retired, they, they moved to rural Victoria and they settled into their new home. And uh, you know, I'm one of six kids, so they invested in our education, but they didn't have a lot of money left over at the end of their working lives. So they found themselves on a part pension. And uh, everything was going really well in their new country home until after a few months, something terrible happened. They received their first electricity bill. And when they opened it up, the bill was $2,500 for one quarter. And they thought, how did it happen? And it was because they had been running the in-slab electricity heating system in their home. So the first thing they did is they turned off the in-slab heat. The second thing they did is they called me on my holidays to build the biggest wood pile that you'll ever see. <laughs> because they had an old-fashioned stove in the kitchen, and now they'd be running that around the clock in, in, during the winter time. And the third thing they did is they took a small amount of their limited savings, and they bought a solar system for their roof. Now, four years later, um, uh, uh, they have one big regret about what happened. And their big regret is that they didn't buy a solar system twice the size. Now, people like my parents all around Australia are taking action to slash their power bills. On average, the solar system will reduce an average power bill by 65%. That's a huge saving for people on fixed incomes, for community members, for people like my parents on, on, on a, on a part page. Uh, so there is, there is a huge incentive. So if, if governments are interested in cost of living for Australians, then actually giving them help to get solar is the single most helpful thing they can do. They should be making it easier for people to get solar, not more difficult. So uh, uh, before the election, and, and I will be talking mostly today about our federal policy uh, that was introduced at the beginning of the session, and that's because the one remaining piece of legislation to support solar and renewables in Australia is currently under threat. So it's the one big policy, it's a federal government policy, um, uh, uh, and so I, I do want to talk about that a little bit. So before the election, the coalition government, Tony Abbott, was a great friend of the renewable energy industry. In fact, we have plenty of, of images of him, uh, up ladders with hard hats on, talking to homeowners that are installing solar hot water, uh, uh, talking to the manufacturers who make solar hot water, solar PV. Uh, and he was saying how good it was that people were saving money with their power bills and how busy the installers must be installing their systems around the country. And we knew that they wanted to repeal the carbon tax. Okay, that was well known, that's fine. We knew that they didn't like the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. Now that's a bank, it's a government bank that invests in renewable energy projects. And it creates a profit. And the profit that it creates gets fed back into the budget 
uh, the budget bottom line. So it would, would have been very helpful in these times of budget emergency that we face that, uh, that you had a bank like that that would return uh, revenue to the budget. But unfortunately, no, the government wasn't interested in that. That's okay, we, we understood that too. But they, they were supportive of everything else. And then after the election, everything changed. And the speed and determination by which Tony Abbott has personally targeted every climate and renewable energy related policy at a federal level has been breathtaking. In fact, it's been so fast, so complete, that, that even us in the industry have almost not been able to keep up with just how comprehensive it's been. Um, uh, the Climate Commission, uh, uh, they want to abolish the, the, uh, uh, the Climate Change Authority. Um, that they're, they're abolishing, uh, got a legislation right now to abolish the Australian Renewable Energy Agency. That's the body that puts funding into some of the world's best researchers here at the Australian National University, at, the, at, uh, at, at ANU as well, at CSIRO. So it is not fanciful to say that Australians have been responsible for inventing most of the solar technology that you see in use all around the world today. We did a terrible job commercialising it, making sure the benefits stayed in this country, but we're funded. And the world's best solar scientists remain right here in Australia. Well, not for much longer, because that entire program is, is uh, up for abolition right now, as we speak. And I could name a, a, another 10 or 15 programs that have all been targeted. Then it came to the, to the uh, renewable energy target. So the renewable energy target says that uh, uh, we should have at least 20% renewable energy by 2020. The target was originally introduced by the Howard government in 2001. And since that time, we've been very lucky. We've had bipartisan support for this great program. It's been fantastic. Um, unfortunately, the Prime Minister has demonstrated that he is today the most radically anti-renewables Prime Minister in Australia's history. He has taken a personal interest in closing down the renewable energy sector. So what did he do? Pause and just uh, uh, make, a, make a, a, an observation. It is only two years ago that there was a full review of the renewable energy target. You'd hardly think it, would you? Two years ago. And it took almost a year to complete that review. And it was done by an independent expert group called the Climate Change Authority. They provide expert opinion to the Parliament of Australia. And people like Bernie Fraser, the Governor of the Reserve Bank, former Governor of the Reserve Bank. People like Heather Riddolt, a current board member of the Reserve Bank, were involved in running that review. So hardly notorious radicals, right, who are boosters for the renewable energy industry, right, sensible, me measured, considered, economists, very well respected, you know, they did the review. And at the end of the two year, the, the, the one year review, they said to government, the, 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 any benefits that you would get from changing the scheme are more than wiped out by the uncertainty that you create, the sovereign risk that you create in changing the scheme. They said that rooftop solar should be supported because it helps industry, homeowners, so it shouldn't be changed. So that was their review. Now, uh, the government comes to office. Tony Abbott personally says, well, I'm not interested in having these independent experts do a review. And even though the legislation states that they are the people that must do the review before the end of December, it's the, it's the law, actually. <laughs> he ignores all of that, and he handpicks his own review team. So who does he put in charge? He puts uh, Dick Warburton in charge. Now, Dick Warburton, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, a businessman, a self-proclaimed climate sceptic. Right, so that's the mindset. Then he puts people like Dr. Brian Fisher in behind there. People who have been working for years for the petroleum industry, calling for the renewable energy target to be abolished. And now he's not calling for it to be abolished, he's judge and jury. Right? He gets to play a leading role. People like Shirley Infeld. She ran the largest fossil fuel generator in Western Australia. She's judge and jury. Right? And so you have this completely 
biased, unrepresentative, um, uh, you know, just it, it, the whole process absolutely appalling. And they go through and they say, we're going to review the renewable energy tax. At first they said, we're going to tell you everything that's wrong with it, but we're not going to model any of the benefits of the renewable energy tax. And we pushed them, we goaded them publicly, until finally they, they couldn't they couldn't hold out. They said, well, okay, we will we'll model what the positive impact of renewables are for people's electricity bills. Right? Fantastic. So what happens? They finish their review. In every assumption where they could be pro-fossil fuel and anti-renewables, they were. Let me give you one example. They say that gas prices will fall from today to 2016, and then we'll stay at that lower level until 2040. What? So um, uh, you know, they, they're not making any uh, allowance for carbon pricing or any sort of carbon sort of uh, pricing mechanism out until and beyond 2040, right? Just not, just not credible, it's credible, it's simply not credible. So they do this, and then they table their findings. Unbelievable. So uh, they, they go and they see the Prime Minister with their, with their uh, interim findings where they say that the renewable energy tax should be scaled back but not abolished. And the Prime Minister says, no, you need to harden up, go back and give me a recommendation to abolish the renewable energy target. So they do. They go away, there's a big scramble, they have to get some extra public servants in, they have to rewrite the report in a hurry, right, they get extra time, and then they deliver a report to the Prime Minister that says, you should close the renewable energy target. Yeah? Tick, job done. I want, to, I want to touch on one thing really critical that's come out of this process, and that is the big lie. And the big lie is this. Renewable energy pushes up electricity prices for everybody else. Right? You heard the Prime Minister talking about at the beginning of the review. Now, we already knew, we already had five independent consulting reports saying that that was not true. SKM, Rome Consulting, Bloomberg New Energy Finance, Snyder Electric, um, uh, and one other, anyway, five of them, that said, in fact, the opposite is true. So when we pushed the review team, they got Acel Allen, their fossil fuel modelers of choice, to run the same scenario. And guess what? Guess what they found? The more renewables you have on the network, the cheaper electricity prices become for everybody. Not just for the 65% saving for the person who put solar panels on, but actually there's a benefit to their neighbours. <coughs> right? They couldn't hide from the truth. Even they showed, and that's why today the Prime Minister is not talking about, well, we're going to keep electricity prices low. They're talking about, well, we've got overcapacity in the system, right? These are these other arguments that are coming out in McFarland and others, right? Absolutely outrageous, but it has been shown to be the great light. Now, I won't go into too much detail about the technical reasons why that happens, because the energy market is actually extraordinarily complex. But suffice to say this, when electricity is most expensive during periods of peak demand, most notably around the heat waves that we get in January and February and March and April and increasingly in May and June and other times of the year, right? And that's because uh, human-induced climate change is real, right? Um, uh, then the, the, uh, the action of solar in particular, of feeding electricity in at that time, dramatically drops the wholesale price of electricity which means that the cost of the scheme is more than offset by the benefits to all, to all consumers. So there goes the, the major plank of their argument right there, it's gone. At the Australian Solar Council, we're interested in good solar policy. We are not a partisan organisation. We're a not-for-profit organisation that represents consumers, researchers, and the industry, people who have an interest in renewable energy. Um, we back, for example, the Palmer United position that there should be no change to the renewable energy target, that it was an election promise, and election promises should be kept. We support the Greens, who have a position to support the renewable energy. We support Labor. But today, 
the Liberal, Co Liberal National Coalition federally are absolutely intent on destroying the renewable energy target. So they've done this completely biased review, they've came up with these bogus findings, and they've badly misread the public's opinion on this issue. And so that is what we're working on. Now I'll be the first person to stand up so alongside Tony Abbott to say, if he says we're supporting the existing renewable energy target, I'll be the first to congratulate him. That's job done, right? Um, we're not interested. We're, there is no alternative motive for this. However, when his policy threatens 21,000 jobs, people directly employed in the solar industry in Australia today, when it threatens the livelihoods of 4,500 small businesses, there is more solar proportionally in the mortgage belts and in rural and regional Australia than anywhere else. The less you earn, the more likely you are to have solar on your roof. The number one solar suburb for New South Wales, Dubbo. Not Vaucluse, Dubbo. Right? So there is, a, there is a, a direct relationship. So uh, the government has read public opinion badly on this, and that's why we are running a unashamedly pointed political campaign. We want the people of Australia to know what's happening in the sector. We, we want them to know that it's under attack. And if we, the people, do nothing about it, then it will just be written off, right? And we're simply not going to stand by and let that happen. I want to just, before I conclude, because there's lots, I think, which will be useful in conversation, you know, in questions. But I do want to re uh, just respond to some of the points that Ian McFarlane made in his speech that you just pointed to us. The first one is that um, what are you talking about? Of course we're not closing the renewable energy target. Well, you know, I, I talk to people like Greg Hunt on a regular basis. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and he's perplexed. Why do people think we're so anti-renewables? Like, really? What planet do you live on? Right? Everybody can see the agenda. But they have almost like a university debating me mentality, right? Where they say, well, um, if the small-scale scheme rooftop solar is shut down, and we stop all new wind farms and big solar farms, but we keep paying certificates to the existing wind farms, well then, we haven't shut the scheme down, have we? Right? It's like, what planet are you people on, right? So there's kind of this, this schoolboy debating mentality where they can kind of just get around this by, and just thinking that people just buy that, right? It just doesn't watch. The second uh, that, that he talked about is that we're oversupplied. Well, we're oversupplied, so therefore cut out renewables. Well, I say that this policy was about bringing renewable technology online. If we're oversupplied, retire and close the most polluting, least efficient, oldest coal-fired power stations. Close the brown coal power stations in Victoria, which are a blight on the environment. They're also expensive. They're also creating health problems. We also have coal fires in Queensland, sorry, in, in, in Victoria, right? Close this technology. So all it means is, is uh, instead of saying, we're oversupplied, so you shut down the future, you shut down renewables, you shut down those things that are reducing electricity prices, strengthening the grid, letting people cut their power bills, you know, instead of saying that, you say, oh, we're going to protect these poor darlings, right? These, uh, these large fossil fuel generators, right? They're the ones that we've got to protect. Outrageous. So let me just tell you another point. Michelle Grattan, in the, con in the con conversation, tells us that the Liberal National Party's received over $900,000 in political donations from the fossil fuel industry in the last four years alone. $900,000. And the payoff? A $10 billion windfall that'll go straight to those generators and those companies if the Reddit shut down. I've got to say, dirty politics equals dirty electricity. Right? This is, this is the truth that people know. And, and I've got to say, people just won't stand for it. And actually, I'm mad as hell. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, the next one is investment, he said. McFarland's an investment. We're giving a billion dollars worth of investment to, uh, uh, to, to uh, the renewable energy research bodies. Right? So, so he's claiming a win, they're doing a fantastic job. And that's why, right now in Parliament, there is something called the Australian Renewable Energy Agency 
abolition bill, which is being debated right now in Parliament. So he's saying publicly, we are the great investors in, in, in research and development. And at the, exactly the same time, they're closing the agency down. What planet do these people live on? Right? The gall of it is just absolutely staggering. Uh, he then says, we should only invest in one I part. No. <laughs> 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 we shouldn't be picking winners. We, you know, we shouldn't just be investing in, in renewables, right? Well, what well he says, what do you want me to do? Invest in the fossil fuel industry? Guess what he does? The federal government invests in the fossil fuel industry to the tune of almost $10 billion a year. And they do it in a really smart way. They don't have government programs that are the target of the will of government of the day. They actually write it into the tax law. So it's things like, like, like diesel fuel rebates. It's like mining exploration rebates. It's, it's about special concessions for the fossil fuel industry. You know? So uh, this, this nonsense that they're giving support to fossil Remember, the renewable energy target does not come out of budget. There's not a cent that comes out of budget. It's a mechanism paid for through the electricity sector. So, look, for that reason and many, many more, um, I think that actually this campaign that we're running, uh, we begin uh, advertising, advocating people to vote to save solar, vote to save money, uh, begins at lunchtime on, on Tuesday. We're taking this, we're targeting 20 marginal coalition seats across the country. We've had forums in Petrie, northern suburbs of Brisbane, in Eden Monero, next Wednesday night we're in the Electorate of Barton which is just south of uh, Sydney Airport in Sydney. And each time, so many people have come from the local electorate, we've had to lo lock the doors and turn people away because we're breaching the fire regulations of the RSL Club. And the, other. The, the other thing that's struck me with this issue is that it's attracted and galvanised people right across the political divide. We've had people from small businesses. We've had renewable energy investors. We've had manufacturers. We've had trade unions, we've had the Palmer United Party, we've had the Greens, a coalition that spans from Clive Palmer to Christine Mill. And, and literally every second in between. And I've got to tell you, probably the loudest voices that we get are voices that are traditional coalition supporters who are broadly with this government, believe that you know, economic reform is important. But they're saying with one voice, Mr Abbott, on this issue you have quite wrong. Uh, and we will galvanise that support. We will activate uh, right across the country, uh, and uh, and we will win. We will change this policy, and we will win. Otherwise, we will work to change the government. Thanks very much.